Good morning, Pat Zemer here with the MagnaWave office hours for this Tuesday morning. Sorry I'm a few minutes late. Uh, I guess I'm a little in a little fog this morning. I have to pick where I'm broadcasting this particular uh, segment to, and I was putting it on our practitioner page, so our practitioners got the preview of what this is, and so and I all of a sudden thought, hmm, I didn't pick where this is going, so I needed to come back, restart, and put it on the... Uh, the uh, corporate MagnaWave page. So those of you who are joining us, thank you for being patient and waiting a few minutes for me to get my head screwed on right in these office hours so I can present this information to you. My name is Pat Zemer. I'm the president and founder of MagnaWave. Uh, back in 2007. I've been doing this type of therapy since 2002, uh, actively working with PEMF uh, devices and therapies since that, since that point in time. I was a practitioner first, uh, treating thousands of clients, be it people, small animals or humans, uh, all over the world it seems like, and actually so. Uh, so we've got, been very busy doing that since 2002 and then as MagnaWave since 2007. I've been asked quite often, what are your credentials and, and how do you, you were a salesman and how do you bridge this gap? Well, yes, I've worked in sales of PEMF products and, and doing therapy with PEMF products, PEMF products over the years. But I also have some secondary education in microbiology and, and pathology or post, postgraduate education in those areas. A long time ago, but uh, it's, still, it's still in there to help me grasp what we're talking about as we uh, do things here with PEMF and MagnaWave. So if you have questions, uh, please post them here, and I'd be happy to answer them. Post them right on the Facebook page. If you got questions that you'd like to ask privately, you can cer certainly post those questions to my Gmail account. That would be magnawave1 at gmail.com. It's magnawave1 at gmail.com, and those questions will come up, and I'll uh, see them and, and be happy to answer them for you. If you're in a situation that you can't do either one and you'd like to text a question, please do text it over to 502-271-8400, 502-271-8400, and I'll get your text messages there. That's my personal cell number, and I'm always available to answer questions at any time if folks have questions that they would like to have answered. I have several questions that have come in the last couple of couple of days that people have wanted me to answer uh, on this program, and I will uh, uh, do that here as we go along. Let me take a look here, um, see if we have any questions that are here this morning. Okay, several people are with us. We're glad. We're glad of that. Thanks for the thumbs up for those of you who are with us. Let me uh, go to some of the questions that I've been asked, and I'll get those. From Linda, can you refer me to receive some studies on PEMFs, efficacy, RE, healing, rotator cuff tears? She says she fell off her horse, broke her back, and port, partly tore her rotator cuff. That's a, Linda, I'm so sorry you had uh, suffered that, uh, that situation, and you've got to have to deal with it. But uh, let me answer it this way. There are studies on our websites under research that deals a lot with bone healing um, and bone situations. Um, there are a couple of studies that we did with lumbar issues and knee problems that we use specifically our equipment to address those particular indications. There are certainly under research studies that have been done all over the world dealing with all types of, all types of indications. But in a, as a rule, we don't really treat a specific indication. We treat the areas of the body to allow them to be in a position for the body to better heal itself or to better utilize the medication or the therapies that are being administered into an area to help it heal. So what we do is we go into the area. In rotator cuff, for example, we want to reduce the inflammation that's occurring there, We want to, which will relieve pain. If you take away inflammation, it doesn't bind. The body's not bound up as, as much to and it has to fight through something to really begin the healing process. So inflammation reduction is a huge part of the body's healing process. So if you put it on and utilize it, it can be very helpful with regard to that particular situation. So Linda, I hope that helps. Uh, put it on and treat it is what Aaron always says. And by the way, Aaron, our, our training director, had her, had her baby yesterday. I know some of you are aware of that. And uh, she's on maternity leave at this point, had a, a little girl, and we're all excited for Erin and, and uh, that she's doing, be doing great and got a healthy little baby at home, so uh, that's really cool. So let's see if we've got some questions here. Um, feel free. Oh, people, all right. No, nope, no questions on from the viewers at this point. Let me see here. We've got another, 
another question that was uh, issued to me. I was wondering if MagnaWave was doing more sponsorships. If so, would you consider a team in Wellington, Florida of top dressage horses who represent Spain? We do have a, uh, a sponsorship type of program that goes along with our referral affiliate program to where folks that, that choose to fly the MagnaWave banner and, and, and utilize it in their, in, their F, in their endeavors in horse show world, dog world, human sports world, whatever it may be, uh, to where people actually do this. They promote our services if some, with their name attached. If someone comes to MagnaWave and makes a purchase or gets involved with something, then those there's a piece of those funds that are, are referred back to the sponsoring, uh, to the person that was sponsored. And so we do have some avail availabilities now for sponsorship in all levels. If somebody's new and coming up in a particular sport and they want to, and, they, and they're not in a position that they can't have sponsorships, you know, a college and that type of thing, and the, but they can work with us, we'd be more than happy to work with folks in the area of sponsorships. And if you have further questions, please, uh, you can call me at any time or we can talk to our folks in that area here at the office. Okay, let's see. Um, any other questions? Nothing over here from the viewers. Still a bunch of viewers uh, joining us, and that's great. We are uh, got up to... 15 folks with us at this point in time. Share this if you're doing that so other folks can, can join us live and get their questions answered. Uh, another question is, what is the best way to treat shins in a horse? Well, shins are basically an inflammation of the ligament and the tissue uh, in, the, in the leg, <clears throat> ankle area, and, and they primarily in growing horses. Uh, they used to talk about Osgood Slaughter's disease or uh, those types of, of disease. The, the splint bones and the cannon bone uh, are, are together in, in, the, in the foot and, or in the leg, excuse me, and, and they need to fuse. They typically are fused by the time a horse reaches the age of three or four years, but they can become inflamed when there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of work, and which can slow down this fusion, can hinder the fusion, and so you don't want that. And so basically it's an inflammation. And so we want to get rid of that inflammation and allow the horse to, to be healthy and, and to better heal itself. They always talk about time off, which is certainly necessary in those types of situations. But can you shorten that time off with the utilization of PEMF? For sure, uh, because we are basically an inflammation reduction device. We set the body up with our, with our modality that goes in and helps the cell wall be more permeable, allowing more oxygen in, toxins out. Improved oxygenation will go a long way to help the inflammation. So we would treat the area that you're dealing with. You treat the, the splints. You might do it every day uh, for a period of time to get it under control or to help it become under control with the veterinary's help or whoever, however you're approaching that. And, and then as often as needed to keep the inflammation and to keep the, uh, in this case, the horse comfortable. So the best way to put, do it is to put it on and treat it. I would treat it moderately for six to eight minutes uh, daily uh, if possible and then as often as, as needed to necessarily to hold the situation. So it looks like we do have a question here. Um, I just found out my mare pulled a piece of bone from her shoulder while the mus muscle moved itself from, removed itself from the shoulder as well. She's been out for four months. Can MagnaWave help repair the bone? Well, that goes along a little bit with what we were talking about. Great question, by the way, and, and uh, sorry that that happened. But it goes along a little bit with the question that, that Linda asked about rotator cuff. Certainly, as an inflammation reduction device, uh, MagnaWave can help that process along, is said to help that process along by helping to relieve the inflammation. Again, inflammation is key. I would treat the area, uh, work, provide sessions on the area as often as, as comfortable and as necessary to make sure that, that the animal is, remains comfortable and can progress in a good healing process. So it's a, the modality is FDA approved for, uh, mending uh, non -union, helping non-union fractures heal and it's been used for years in in the uh, bone healing area so most assuredly i think that, that sessions could be a benefit uh, to your horse with that type of situation so let's see um cantaloupe size inflammation in area what is your protocol Oh, well, there is not a protocol. There are some guidelines that, again, she's got these large areas of inflammation. You want to work on those areas to get the inflammation down. 
If there's something, and obviously we have a tear, we have a removal, we have a, a bone chip pulled away, so there's an anatomical condition here that, that is going to try to exacerbate this and cause it to stay or return. So it, it's, a, it's a half dozen one, six the other. We want to help the horse be more comfortable. We want to help the inflammation be relieved. But as soon as you stop, you've got that physical condition that's going to try to re-aggravate itself and, and keep it and keep it going or slow the process down. So it's very important that you stay consistent and diligent in, in your work with this. But again, getting rid of the inflammation will be very beneficial to that situation. Great question and uh, hope you have great success uh, with, with taking care of your horse. Uh, let's see. Um, Ron, Ronald asked a question, have you had any experience with using MagnaWave to improve sleep patterns or anxiety? Great question. Uh, Ronald, and the, the short answer is yes. Um, we've known for years, and it's interesting how this stuff sneaks up on you as you're as you're doing these things. We, you know, you're going. We're treating, you know, helping people have their backs feel better, and their shoulders, and their knees, and their ankles. And, and what we always would get is a report: "Boy, I slept so well last night. I just slept better than I slept in weeks." And, and so, if you just have good oxygenation, good improved blood flow, it do, it is very calming. The, the, the process, the sessions have a very calming effect on the body. So can it be beneficial to sleep patterns? Uh, most assuredly. There have been times, uh, I remember when I first started, uh, some people that I was working with, uh, these young ladies uh, would, every night when they would go to bed, they'd put a coil on their back and, and have it running until they fell asleep and helped them get to sleep. I have on occasion put the mat uh, in, in my bed if I was being restless or having trouble sleeping and treated myself on the mat, in bed, getting ready to go to sleep. Again, very effective. With regard to anxiety, Ronald, great question again. Uh, we've had, again, because of the calming effect, we have folks that have anxiety, people that, that get anxiety to the point of, of agitation. You can calm them. Uh, we have several uh, clinics that do uh, are into uh, drug rehab, and so you're dealing with a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress in those situations. Again, if you can make those people feel calmer and you can make those people not have the pain, a lot of times they get stuck in those situations because they have pain, they start using a particular medication, they get addicted to it, and then bingo, here we go down that old road. But if you can help them with their pain, help them with their anxiety, then they put them in a better frame of mind to better want to heal themselves and, and go down the road. Uh, so, and, and to that end, we've also had uh, very good success. We're getting ready to do a preliminary study uh, dealing with uh, depression. Clinically non-responsive depression will be done in, in, in the San Francisco area for a small beginner study. But uh, those three areas are very well uh, addressed with PEMF therapy uh, at this point. Uh, let's see here. Um, Oxygen in, toxins out. Perfect. Yes, Marine. That's exactly uh, that's exactly that's exactly the deal. Oxygen in, toxins out. A lot of good folks with us this morning. We're very happy about that, and, and want us to be sure to uh, answer your questions. Uh, here's a question. Uh, oh, uh, some people use inverters when they uh, power their devices, um, and they use batteries to run their devices. We do a lot of work in the Amish community, and of course, they, a lot of those folks don't have power. So they have to run the devices either off of a uh, uh, car power you know, uh, with an inverter or a generator, uh, that type of thing. And the question is, uh, with the digital devices, we really want you to have what is called a pure sign inverter, S-I-N-E. It's just a way that the, that the little inverter cleans up the signal coming from the, the car battery or coming from the, what you're char getting the charge from and making it acceptable to the machine so it doesn't cause any damage. That's not necessarily net, uh, uh, important for the analog machines, and that's also part of this question, or the machines that use actual spark gap technology. But just as a general rule, if you're going to buy an inverter, have a sign, a uh, pure sign, inverter, converter, and it, you'll, be in, you'll be in good shape. For years, I had one a little... Uh, plug in. I bought it at Walmart. And you plug it into the cigarette lighter, and it accepts a, a plug. And and I'd plug my stuff in, and uh, on my golf cart, and treat horses or treat people as I travel around some of the venues that we were working, and uh, worked worked very well. 
Digital devices, though, you want to have as clean of wave or clean as energy source as possible to the machine. So we recommend a pure sign inverter. Um, any other questions, folks, as we're going along here? I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, also, I wanted to say part of that question is um, they were talking about what is the uh, – wait, wait a minute, let me find that. Oh, okay, so what is the question – what is the difference between analog and digital and tens and ultrasound and laser, are they electrically based? Okay, the difference between analog and digital – uh, digital means that the signal that is being produced, the waveform that is being produced and introduced uh, from the device is computer generated. It, it, it goes through a panel and bingo, here comes the charge that we need and that's uh, transmitted uh, through the waveform to the body. Analog, on the other hand, is where you actually have a, what they call a spark gap or a spark chamber in the device. So the power comes into the machine and this chamber, this spark chamber, it's got like two electrodes. And the closer these electrodes are to each other, the lower the intensity of the device. The further away they are, the, the spark, the bolt of lightning has to travel a bigger distance, creating a more strong uh, release of energy, which will then produce a stronger signal or stronger delivery of the, of the uh, therapy to the area that you're that you're treating. I always talk about it being like uh, lightning. You know, you can be outside and you see lightning that's down the way and you see a bolt of lightning and then five seconds, 10 seconds later, you hear the rumble of the thumb, thunder. Or you're standing there and you're, you're outside and you see the lightning behind the neighbor's house or in the next field and your hair stands up, you feel it. Well, the energy is probably very similar in those two bolts of lightning, but one was farther away and one was closer. So. Again, it's a little reversed with what we're doing, but the closer it is, the less the power, as far as our device is concerned, the farther away the two electrodes are, the more the power. But you, you get the idea of the, of the lightning strikes as it works in that fashion. So that's the difference between the analog and the uh, digital unit. They are electrically powered. They are electrically generated. You have to have that to create the, the, the waveform that we're talking about. And so the question comes down uh, and is the TENS, ultrasound, and laser therapy electrically based? Yes, all three of those technology requires electrical power to stimulate the device to do what it does. The ultrasound is a device that penetrates the body, can send back a picture for you to see, or generate waves in the body to help the area uh, in a healing type of situation. The TENS will where they'll put two pieces on your body and it basically will flex back and forth as it works a particular muscle group in the body to help that particular area. The magna wave goes all the way through that area. People will say, well, is it TENS? The TENS is doing this right here. The magna wave will go all the way through the full shoulder and do everything. When we talked about Linda's uh, rotator cuff, it does the rotator cuff, it does the tendon, it does the cartilage, it does the muscle, it does everything in the area to help stimulate everything. And then, uh, and then of course, the last one was uh, laser therapy. Laser therapy is certainly electrically generated, creates a, a light image that is penetrating into the body to be very specific in its treatment area. A laser, we would kind of move it around the body to or around the area to treat what you want to get in order to get to it. It doesn't go through bone, so it's really no benefit to the bone except for nourishing some of the area around the bone, which can be beneficial to the bone. But it stops it at the bone. So there is the, there is the difference. Again, it is an electrically based uh, type of product. Okay, let's see. I have another question here. Are there situations clinically where the spark chamber would have a benefit over solid state or vice versa? You know, uh, Ron, that's probably a, a very, a very good question. The the waveform is the same from them both, from both manners, as far as our devices are concerned. The intensity uh, it can be adjusted the same over the over the two devices. Uh, so I would think that in in clean theory, the answer would be no. They're going to both do the same thing. However, when you get into the field and you experience things, there is a little difference. The, the waveforms for the, from the spark chamber machine seems to be a little sharper when, when you feel it. 
uh, and the waveform from the digital machines is a little more comfortable as it enters the body. I'm not going to say that the spark chamber is uncomfortable, but it is, as you turn it up, it can be a little more sharp, whereas the digital is just a little more comfortable. I've had situations where people who are used to a spark chamber machine and they use a digital machine, they'll say, boy, I, re I really like the way that spark chamber machine does it. Well, it's because that's what they've used. There haven't been digital machines really on the market till the last two or three years. Uh, and so we have to address and grow through that whole process uh, to address which one would be better in certain situations or which ones would not. Um, the spark gap machines uh, are probably are in most cases more powerful than the digital machines. The reason for a lot of that, at least in our perspective, because with our digital machines, our factory and, and, and we are working to have safety approval, to have FDA clearance or FDA approval on these devices, uh, which is a long, slow, arduous process. But at one point in all of this, a couple of years ago, the FDA said, you know, your, your spark chamber devices that are controlled with a, with a dial, you really don't need that much power when you're dealing with, with humans and all this kind of stuff. So a lot of the devices have been designed to be of a little less power, uh, not, not significant, maybe 15, 20 percent less power, which you would never notice if you were re receiving a treatment on the higher end of the, of the spectrum. But so you, that's why some of the digital machines are, in fact, a little less powerful than the spark chamber machines, which would say if you're, if you're in a situation that you want the maximum amount of, amount of power for an ankle or a foot or something like that, could, and you'd get a little more power from the digital machine, I mean, for, excuse me, from the analog machine, someone might say, well, I like that. I like that a little better. Long answer to a very, <laughs> to a very simple question, but a very good question. Uh, we have seen, uh, when I was first exposed to our digital devices and experienced them on my body, my knee-jerk reaction was, well, I, 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 I'm used to this machine I've been using for 10 years. And, and it just feels different to use the digital, digital device. But at the end of the day, when my result was the same, uh, it was okay. And so, uh, you know, to, to kind of answer your questions, I don't really see any situation except... If, if you're talking about, and, and I know your, your questions, Ron, appear to be more human-based, but if I would move over and start talking uh, equine, uh, where they're talking about foot issues and knees and animals that weigh a 1,000 pounds or more, you know, that additional power, that additional 20% of power in the, in the foot or an ankle or a knee, may, there may be times that they want to get to that level and use it. So there's a point there where, where the analog could be potentially of a little bit more benefit. Hope that clears up your question. If you would like to resurface it or ask it, and if I can help some more, please do that. Uh, let's see. How often should a person get treatment for a torn rotator cuff? Well, again, what we want to do is provide this energy to the area to set up the body to better heal itself. So we, I would say... Uh, typically what we do, and let's just say it's a first treatment. Someone would treat, would have a session on their shoulder to help relieve some pain or to potentially reduce some inflammation, put it on there, treat it for six to eight minutes at a, at a moderate setting that's comfortable and see how it feels. See how the movement is, see how the pain is at that point, and then come back. If you're in a situation that you can come back four to six hours later and do it again, and then see, well, gee, how's it doing? But you want to treat it often enough that you stay ahead of the pain. Ideally, the first time you might treat something, you might get three or four hours of pain relief. The second time you treat it, you might get five to six hours of pain relief. The third time you treat it, you might get pain relief all day. Now, that's not in stone. You could have to treat it four or five times to get pain relief all day because everybody's different. Every indication is different, and then it depends whether or not it's uh, muscular based or anatomically based on how it goes. But you would treat enough to be comfortable, to get what I call ahead of the situation, so then the body can better work to heal itself. And then you would treat as often to maintain that. When I tore my MCL on my knee when we moved into this current office facility that we're in today, uh, I treated myself twice a day, probably for the first two weeks. 
and then I would use a low power device. I would use Bob Dennis's device through the day when I was working just to keep things at bay. I put it in my pocket, put the, the coils on my knee, and it just helped everything stay stay in place. But I treated myself twice a day, probably for two weeks. Then I went back to once a day. Then I was in twice a week, three times a week, whatever it was, in order to keep things comfortable. If I would do something stupid and all of a sudden I felt some reversal, then I'd treat it once or twice a day for three or four days to get back to where I needed to be. And ultimately, uh, the doc told me that it could take months for this to uh, really heal over well and uh, or get itself into the best condition as possible. And it really took about two months that I was uh, really in pretty good pretty good shape and, and comfortable with it. But I did continue to work it whenever it would hurt a little bit uh, for the next few months. But it's for all intents and purposes, we sped up the healing process probably by a third to almost a half. So I hope that answers your question uh, on, the, uh, on the treatment procedure for uh, rotator cuff. So uh, if you have any other questions, please, let me check over here and see if there's anything popping up on, uh, on the Gmail account here that I might be able to answer or the text messages. Um, nope, everything looks good there those questions all right so we're ahead, staying ahead of the game here let me pull up some of the questions that i was asked uh earlier um yes okay oh what is the wattage and voltage the max unit uses uh when it's plugged in and in use this is about the same for any of the devices we have uh from the semi unit uh, all the way up to the max the maya the pulse pro the Pulse Pro devices, they really require very little power, uh, enough to power a couple of light bulbs is, is all it really takes. So you're not going to use a huge, it doesn't take a huge surge of power. The machine develops its own power. The capacitor fills up with power, discharges, and you have your, your signal that's generated into the body. On the analog machines, that's the spark chamber that releases that energy. On the digital machines, the capacitor is still there, building up power. When it reaches the level that the computer talks about, releases the discharge and you have the energy released from the device to the body. So it takes very little power, a couple hundred watt generator. If somebody was going to use a generator, as I've talked about, I powered my Max machine off of my golf cart for years uh, when traveling around to various horse shows and things. I just got a little inverter, plugged it in, plugged the machine in, and, and away I went. So it doesn't take much power at all to uh, utilize, utilize these devices. You're not going to see your electric bill uh, go sky high or or through the roof at, at that point in time. Um, let's see, uh, any couple of questions? Uh, the bundle includes the machine as well as the listed attachments. That is correct. Um, you have the machine that comes depending on your bundle. If you're talking about the semi, you have the bundle that's with the large loop, the butterfly loop, and then the mat. Uh, in the equine bundle, you have the large loop, butterfly loop, and, and the uh, large wave wings, or the paddle, I believe, is the configuration in that particular in that particular bundle. So the bundles do include the um, uh, those pieces that are with it. There is one place that I wanted to click, make one clarification, and that's with the new lounger, the MagnaWave PEMF Wave Oasis lounger uh, that plays has a uh, entrainment style of music that's focused to help with uh, emotion or meditation or depression or uh, 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 giving you energy uh, to address the day along with PEMF. That is not a standalone unit. It, it has to work with one of the devices. I will get that question a lot. Let's see. Uh, can you use an extension cord when using an inverter? Um, using an extension cord when using an inverter. So you're going to plug into the inverter. I would I I don't see any reason why that would not, would would not work. And I understand your question uh depending on where you're at if you're someplace that doesn't have power and you're operating out of your car and you're wanting to have, treat in some fashion an athlete or dog or person horse whatever it may be you are extending the length the power has to travel. And and that's a resistance base, and and so so uh, depending on the power you're using, an extension cord could have an effect on that. But I would think in in normal situations you wouldn't want to do anything um, 
over, I remember when I used to charge my golf cart, and I know that the battery, the charger is much larger on a golf cart than it's going to be on an inverter, but they would tell me, if you're going to use an extension cord, if you can't plug the, the charging unit directly in the wall, don't use anything over 25 foot, and make sure it's a very strong, good, powerful extension cord. So if you used a, a not into a little lightweight cord, but a, a ex normal extension cord for outdoor use, let's put it that way, with an inverter, you should be all right. Um, I'd I try it. That, that's a great question. I've never been asked that question before, never been in that situation. But we use extension cords all the time uh, in various situations, whether you're in a training room or a barn or whatever the situation may be. Extension cords are used uh, extensively with, with no problem. But I'd, I'd love to hear your report when you, <laughs> when you come back and you try it. Uh, thanks for the question, Kimberly. Another question I'm thinking of upgrading from the uh, MW Pulse to the Max. Will my coils work with the Max and will I need to buy new coils? No, you're in good shape. Uh, you can use the, on, the, on the all machines, uh, with the exception of the Semi, and the Maya office unit, all the coils are interchangeable. On the uh, on the semi unit, it is a single plug coil, and on the uh, office unit, it also is a single plug coil. We're having some uh, adapters made that we can use the coils uh, with those devices by using an adapter, but that's it's being made at the factory to meet specifications, so everything continues to work properly. So I hope that answers your question there, Kathy. Uh, so I have a semi unit. Is the power the same as the bigger unit? The semi unit has low, medium, and high, but the big unit has a dial with the frequencies low. Uh, what are the frequencies with the low, medium, and high unit? Okay, great question. And uh, I'll, I'll approach that. The, the, the power of the semi is basically 50% of the uh, Maya unit <clears throat> or the max unit. And what that means is in a normal situation, whether you're, you're if you're treating a, again, a small animal person or a horse, uh, on a normal body treatment, rarely would you get up over 50% of the power available when you're treating the body. Now, when you treat ankles and knees and elbows and wrists, that's a little different situation. So, the, the, certainly the, the Maya and Max units, Pulse Pro unit, have more power available to them. Whereas with the Semi, let me do it in numbers. If we're talking uh, 1,000, or we could say 10,000 if we're talking gals, but let's say we're talking 1,000. So when you're on your Semi, your medium is 70% of that 1,000, so it would be 700. And your low would be 40%, so you'd be at 400 on the low, medium, and high on the semi, and that can equate to the, to the Gauss figures as well. So um, in, in many situations, you, you, that's just where it is. Of that 1,000 number, you're at 40%, 70%, and then 1,000. Where that would make a difference is if you're treating uh, or you're providing sessions on 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 something that, that you would use maybe a little more power on the uh, on one of the other more powerful units, you would simply run the semi a little longer. You would do it for, instead of a 10-minute session, you might do a 20-minute session on this elbow. And, and then the result can be very similar. So it's a slower delivering, it, but it is 500 times higher and faster delivery than the low-voltage, low-frequency devices uh, that, that many of the the Beamer devices and some of those other machines are fine for relaxation, but if you need to get after something, get rid of the inflammation and get ahead of the, of the process so you can have your body can better heal itself, those units will take a couple of weeks or longer to get what we're able to accomplish in just 10 or 15 or 20 minutes worth of treatment. Uh, they're all beneficial. I'm not knocking any equipment or anything like that. PEMF is a very viable thing. It's just a matter of what you're looking for and what you need. We're here, frankly, because when I started, we got immediate results. When we treated something, we got an immediate result, better comfort, inflammation reduction immediately, and that's what people wanted. They wanted to put their, their pets or themselves or their, or their horses in, a, in an area to be able to feel better immediately and get the healing process uh, started and underway. I hope that answers your question. Let me make sure 
that I got that. Okay. Um, so you need more power. Uh, Ronald asked the question, so you need more power for the knees and shoulders, etc. Another very good question. You don't necessarily need more power. It's just that because of the muscle, the, because of the tissue in the area, you're able to accept more power into those areas. You're no, you don't have the mass of muscle that's going to react to the device and potentially uh, uh, more than what somebody is comfortable with, so you, you're going you're gonna to back it down. But if you're treating a knee or an ankle, you can give it more power comfortably. And in a, in a case of a... Uh, of an athletic type of situation when you're dealing with an athlete and they pull their pull a, a, a muscle or, or a tendon or something like that and they want to get after the pain right now then more power will help do that uh, more rapidly will help more rapidly accomplish what they're looking to have and so with the with the smaller devices it does equate to where you would put it on a knee instead of again six to eight minutes you might put it on the knee for 20 minutes the comparison that i that it was i found very interesting though uh ron was that uh recently we've all we found out a few years ago that if we if we apply to a, an abscess on a horse that they get in their in their foot in their hoof that that's a abscess that's in there and it needs to go away it needs to be pushed out or or massaged so it goes away or whatever's going to happen or it's just got to be in the stall and wait for it to naturally uh pop or, or do its business but we found that if we applied as much intensity as we could to that animal we could pull those abscesses quite often in a treatment or two um which would which was wonderful people wanted that wanted that to happen let's get this taken care of so we did one with the semi. The difference was instead of with the uh, max, we might treat that that for six to eight minutes as high as we can put the machine in, in order to facilitate the pulling of that abscess. So I got a call. Someone was treating an abscess with the semi, and they said, what, what should I do? I said, what I would do is I'd put it on a foot, use the paddle if that's what you've got, or the butterfly, put it on the foot, and treat it for 30 minutes on high. And that's what they did. And then they skipped a couple of days. And then I happened to be at the barn myself. We pulled that horse out and treated again for 10 minutes. Because that's all the time we had at that point. We treated that horse again for 10 minutes on high. And the abscess pulled, came out that, that evening. So over a span of two treatments and three days, we saw a very similar result um, with the semi machine. So we were real, I was very pleased with that. I was thinking, uh, and of course each, animal is different each thing that you're dealing with can be different so you the results are not typical <laughs> you can have the results can be a little different from uh, person to person uh, let's see uh, what level should I start at uh, let me see I hope that answers your question Ron let's see Serena shoulder um, and then the question, what level should I start at? What's your treat? Oh, okay. You have a semi and you're treating a shoulder. I would do, I'd recommend, again, comfort is the key. And, and the other thing is that we found, or that research has found, that tissue reacts when it's approached from different directions at different intensities. And so if you're, if this is what we're, what we're treating, let me put it so I'm not, block in my face. So if we're treating here, today we might want to treat it here with a very good intensity. Tomorrow we might want to treat it there with a lighter intensity. And then the next time we treat, we want to come from, from this direction and treat it over here from a different intensity, then come back over here. If you're in a situation that you have to do the same area the same way each time, then through the treatment a couple times, change the intensity. It's not that you don't have to do it every time. It's that if you do it, let's just say you did it for three weeks, same intensity, same coil configuration, same location. The cells have memory. And after a while, they can kind of slough that off. So if you surprise them, change the intensity, change the direction, then they're always alert and always receiving the energy that you're, that you're presenting to them. So back to your shoulder. I'd start on the shoulder. I would put it on there at a moderate, uh, maybe a medium, and uh, treat it for the 10-minute cycle. And if you wanted to do the 20-minute cycle at that fine, that, that would be fine. Then the next time, uh, come up to a high and see how it feels. If it's uncomfortable, then just go back to the medium. If it's comfortable on the high, 
leave it there. And, and, and then approach it from different directions as you're working the shoulder. Maybe the one time you put your arm, I'll show you. One time you'll, you'll take your arm and you'll put it through the loop and you'll rest it like this. So you're getting the shoulder area here. You may want to come back and, and do the loop uh, more like this, more like a, and, and you want to have it touching. You put it in a chair and bring it across like this. You could do it that way. If we had the butterfly, certainly you're going to go over the loop over the shoulder front and back with, with the butterfly. So you're just going to approach it different positions uh, at, in different manners. Uh, and that's what I would do. And one time I'd totally change it up and pre pre uh, treat it that day for 10 minutes or 20 minutes on low. And then again, uh, proceed accordingly. I hope that answers your uh, uh, question, Sarah. Uh, let's see. Tom asks, I just lent Dr. Marty mine. And today, I need it. Duh. <laughs> I know Dr. Marty's got one. That got a, Dr. Marty's got a couple of machines and had one that uh, had some issues with and had to return it for some uh, repair, which is very rare. Uh, Dr. Marty's been doing this for years, and I think he's had his machine uh, back, and he uses it consistently every day, twice to the factory over the five years that, that I've been working with him. So that's pretty good when you have extensive uh, use on a, on a machine. He has the uh, analog devices at this point in time. And that's the way it always goes. <laughs> as soon as soon as I don't need it and I loan it to somebody, I need it. And, and that, you know, I understand. Uh, I'm sorry. Hope you get to feeling better quickly. Go over to Marty's office and take your dog with you and treat your dog and yourself at the same time. That'll work out great. Uh, let's see. Uh, any, what other, any other questions? I'm here to, let me check Google or Gmail here and see if there's anything that's popped up there. Uh, I do have a couple more things to show you here. We've been going for about 50 minutes, and that's about the best uh, time frame. Let me make sure there's nothing on text. Okay, everything as good as there. One of the questions that we we, we received lately, uh, some people, because we more and more folks are coming in and they're treating humans, and which is fine. And and we started our business around horses because that's what I was doing. I was selling horse therapy equipment and and providing services for horses, and that's where we started. And and now we've begun over the last year or so to move into the human side. We're going to take the expertise we've learned and the and the way that we've learned that we feel is a great way to do business and, and to be helpful and be here for you, our customers, with regard to questions and moving that into the small animal and the human side. Well, someone asked a question uh, this week. What about your websites? If I go to your go to your website and I look interested in a business and I see that you've got websites on there, they're all equine based. Well. Thank you. Someone brought it to us our attention a month or so ago, and so we have uh, actually put together a uh, the first, and we're going to have a couple more of these uh, websites that are designed for humans. And I'll show you one now, if I may. Uh, here it is. Let me get this out of the way. So my camera control. There we go. So uh, this is what would be a human therapy, a human magnetic PMF therapy site. So of course the business name would go where it says. PMF therapy, and they can schedule a treatment. Uh, their name, again, up here where it says human practitioner, and everything is there. It talks about what the what it is, how it works. And, of course, all of this, if you have a website, can be customized to what you want. This is just an overview of how it may be presented uh, uh, on the human-based site. So we have a lot of happy customers that we talk about with, with various things. If we do about us... Um, has a whole about page, which would be about the practitioner, about the person that's delivering the therapy, uh, whether it's a doctor or a private practitioner or a chiropractor, or massage therapist, whatever it may be, information about your company. And these fixtures can be you, can be more medical in, in, uh, in design if, if you are, like I said, an MD or a chiropractor, something like that. So we're pretty excited about that. And then there's blogs and news. Uh, one of the things that we do do on our on our websites, people that are with us, is we post blogs, and those blogs then go to your individual site as though it was posted by you. So it's your information to help you uh, grow your business uh, with these sites. So um, again, they, that has been a question that's been asked, and and so we do now, and we're going to have we're going to have a human one that's more uh, general, and we'll have one that's more medically based. Uh, for, for docs and, and the like, and then we'll have the same thing for small animal. We'll have a small animal site for people who just want to do small animal work uh, or people who want to uh, uh, do uh, veterinary. If it's a veterinarian using a small animal, uh, they, they have sites available 
for all. And so we're excited about that to bring uh, these to you. And so that's an answer to a question uh, that we've received. So let me come back over here. Hello. Uh, let's see. Any other questions? Um, how would you treat wind puffs with a semi machine? Uh, well, you, basically, you'd put it on a tree. You're going to treat that area and you're going to put it on with a butterfly. And you're going to treat that area for, for probably 10 minutes on a moderate or a high setting. And you're going to do it uh, as often as needed to help the situation. Uh, sometimes they're easy. Sometimes they're a little more difficult. Uh, again, depending on the anatomical situation involved. But the, the signal that's delivered with the semi uh, is, the, uh, is the same. You're just going to maybe do it a little longer. But I'd use the butterfly. Uh, I'd, I'd treat it from the sides. With, with the butterfly and I'd spin it around, treat it front to back with the butterfly. 10 minutes. If you wanted to go 20 minutes your first time out uh, to first couple of times out to get after it, that would be very beneficial and certainly not overkill with the semi, with a unit the power of the semi. Uh, that's a situation that even if you had a max and you're treating, you may not, just for comfort reasons, you may not go very high uh, with your with your treatment levels. So I hope that answers your question. Great question, Cindy. Uh, we've had some great questions today, and I love the interaction and uh, really appreciate you joining us. And uh, help, I hope I can answer your questions, again, whether they're about uh, humans or small animals or equines or cattle or chickens. We've treated it all. We've got pictures on our, on our Facebook page cheating, uh, che cheating, not cheating, treating squirrels with a... Uh, a bad tail couldn't maintain his balance, so they treated him. And we've, as I said, we've done chickens and a little bit of everything. Oh, here's one. Someone asked if you can treat the coffin bone. I'm not sure what is going on with it, though. What would you do best way to do a generic treatment on it? Well, certainly just treat the area. Put the butterfly around it. Uh, use the large coil on it, if you wish. And I would treat it for a precautionary situation. You could treat it for... 10 minutes on a moderate to, to a higher setting, depending which unit you're using, uh, and, and do it as often as comfortable. If you've got something going on, you might do it four or five days in a row just to make sure and see how it does. And then you get to a situation that you're treating once a week, potentially, if it's a, if it's a chronic type of situation that's going to develop. If you get rid of it and it doesn't come back, uh, whatever caused it to come to begin with, a bad turn, a, you know, something that happened to cause it to stress, then you know once that's taken care of, you might be good uh, with that type of uh, with that type of situation. So, but don't be afraid. Treat it as as Aaron would say. How do you treat? How, what's the protocol for that? Or what's the guideline for this? Put it on and treat it, and treat it as long as necessary to maintain the function uh, that you're looking for. So, uh, Brianne, great question. Uh, thank you for asking. Um, let's see. I think that's about it. We've been on for 55 minutes, so uh, I've got another meeting in just a few minutes that I need to uh, go to uh, for marketing and helping you build your business with marketing, if those of you who are in this as a business. So I want to thank you for joining us. I'll be back this afternoon at 2 o'clock live. If I didn't get your question answered, if you get a chance, uh, do it then, or send it to me and I'll be sure and answer it. It'll be held here as a post so you can come back and see it at another time. So thanks for joining me. It's been a great morning and have a great morning yourselves. Have a big one. Bye.